Hello, my name is Judy Dalton. I am the senior pastor of First Christian Church in Pasadena, Texas. This is August 28th, 2022. We're worshiping today from the Dalton House. And with me today, through the, I don't know, modern miracle of recordings is Dr. Julie Durgis, who will be leading us in music. First Christian Church of Pasadena, Texas is dedicated to doing the right thing by our neighbors. And part of that is giving credit where credit is due. That's why we have obtained the correct licensing for the recording and sharing of this worship service. We have also um, used the best ethical practices in the composition and distribution of our worship guides. Let me know if you need one. And speaking of which, let me know if you're worshiping with me uh, remotely any time this week. It's such a, a wonderful and very strange miracle that we are able to worship together at various times in, in all kinds of different places. So I hold you in prayer. Please pray for me. If you have a candle with you, Please light it now. We do so as a reminder that though we are separated by distance, we are one in the Spirit of the Lord. The old jingle says, the best part of waking up, and we add, is Jesus and a cup of coffee. Today we're finishing up our funny little uh, worship series uh, of coffee jokes. David and I have contracted the virus COVID. So this service will be a little shorter than usual. Um, our on-campus worship service will be led by the Reverends Tom Odenpeace and Carl Decker. It's going to be a, a beautiful service. If you are in Pasadena at 10.50 a.m. on August 28th, I heartily encourage you to go worship I, with my COVID, will be nowhere inside. I will be home. Um, but this was my compromise. Uh, I wanted to finish up the series, and the church says, okay, fine, you do the online service. Today, we conclude our series on Hebrews with this question in our minds. How do we live God's love? Let's sing together, Father, I adore you. Um, I may or may not sing along, so in case you need the words, it's, Father, I adore you, lay my life before you, how I love you. And then you do the same thing with Jesus, and then again with Spirit. So, Dr. Julie will lead us in music. Jesus, I adore. 
Mm. We do not have a children's message today. Um, I didn't know, I still don't know how much time I've got on my, my voice before it goes kapooey. Um, but today's a good day to uh, teach children or remind our children about compassion, even toward those upon whom we depend. So the children may not know that their pastor can get sick. This is a good time to say, yes, uh, Dr. Judy can get sick. She's sick now. Let's pray for her. Although if any of you send me a colored picture, I will not be ashamed to put it on my refrigerator. Just saying. All right. Our scripture today comes from Hebrews 13, verses 1 through 8, and then we hop over to verses 15 and 16. Having completed his sermon and not able to deliver it himself, the author uh, writes this little letter as an addendum to the sermon, and he writes to the people, Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Remember those who are being tortured as though you yourself were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Picture this. A married couple in 1975. They're in the little breakfast nook of the kitchen, and you can see the appliances behind them and avocado green and harvest gold. The couple, let's call them Bert and Betty. Bert sits at the, at the breakfast table reading the newspaper while Betty makes breakfast. He tosses the paper aside and exclaims, a gas shortage, now water, what's next? Gently, Betty sets down a cup of coffee in front of Benny and she says, here's your morning's ration of coffee, hon. Bert barks, what? We're running out of coffee too? Sitting down, Betty explains, you said caffeine is bothering you. Well, that's the last straw. You can see Bert getting so upset and he cries out, half a cup? They put men on the moon. Can't they make a coffee I like, rich, without caffeine? We did, the unseen announcer proudly pronounces. Brim decaffeinated coffee is richer in Colombian coffee than the best-selling coffee in America. We're back in the kitchen. The couple, the next morning. Betty hands a mug to Bert. He questions her. What? No half a cup? Smiling, Betty displays the coffee can. Great product placement. She says, it's brim. It's decaffeinated. Have the whole pot. Bert samples the decaffeinated coffee and declares, Mmm, now that's good news. This was a television commercial that ran incessantly back in 1975. 
In fact, the Brim commercials were all over the place in my childhood. There was, it seemed, a big push for flushing out caffeine so that people could enjoy the essence of coffee, its flavor and warmth. Our reading today from Hebrews invites us to flush out all things unneeded so that we may enjoy the essence of a life in Christ, our faith and the warmth of God's spirit. As the man in the commercial said, now that's good news. Let's see what Hebrews has in mind to fill us to the rim. Today's scripture passage is a series of seemingly unrelated moral imperatives. Do this, don't do that. But everything the author advises assists us in focusing on a life of faith. And first, first the author presents um, a matched set of imperatives. Philadelphia and Philozenia. Philadelphia is brotherly love. It's the love of that which is familiar. Philozenia, though, is love of the stranger. And, and the author presents these as um, salt and pepper. You don't separate them. When you pass them down the table, they go together. You can't have one without the other. Then the author continues this theme of connection uh, by saying how every person is connected to every other person, the author does this by turning attention to empathy with prisoners. Um, we are to remember the prisoners. Now, there's no mention of guilt or innocence here, just an acknowledgement that all of humanity is connected. If one is enchained, no one is free. If one is tortured, all hurt. We are connected one to another. Key to this priority is that verb to remember. Now, remembering is not merely reciting or memorizing. Me remembering really means receiving, putting back together. We are charged to receive these God's children and put back together the community of Christ. We're charged to welcome these brothers and sisters into the fold of faith without shaming, without shunning. In fact, we must share with them the undeserved love that Jesus shares so freely with us and with all. Speaking of sharing, our scripture today says that sometimes it's appropriate to share and sometimes not so much. For example, do not share your spouse or significant other, but do share your wealth. Jill Duffield reminds us that Christians are called to contentment, not the relentless acquisition of partners or products. Hebrews quotes the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 31.6, and Psalm 118, 6 through 7, to emphasize that the believer's trust in God makes trust in money not only misplaced, but also a contradiction of faith as well. Our reading today ends with a call to continual worship and the ongoing of good works. Now, those good works do not save us. Jesus has done that. Doing good and sharing what we have define us, demonstrating that the God who loves us is also Lord over us and over every aspect of our lives. It reminds me of a coffee shop David and I visited. It was late June, we were in Nashville and wanted to meet up with some friends. And we heard about this nonprofit coffee shop nearby. The shop is called The Well. And its motto is coffee to water because it uses its profits to build and maintain water wells around the world. I bought this bracelet uh, while I was there. It's made out of 
really inexpensive, uh, very inexpensive materials. Um, the banner part that says coffee to water is made of clay that dried and then it's got some elastic and that's that's really about it. Um, over 80% of the purchase price goes directly to the wells. And it made me think of how easy it is to give a little here and a little more there. So I did a cursory internet search. Quickly, I discovered that almost every state in our country has at least one nonprofit coffee shop. And I want to emphasize that this was a cursory search. I missed many for sure. These nonprofit coffee shops that give their profits to charities reach out to so much of God's creation in so many ways. These points of giving support the following. Animal adoptions and welfare, education and the arts, healthcare, the eradication of human trafficking, hunger relief, international aid, poverty present, prevention, ethical farming, employment opportunities for people with disabilities, refugee care, suicide prevention, clean water access, youth programs, and more. Many of these coffee houses and roasting companies advertise with this dictum, drink coffee and do good. Wow. It's almost like Worship God and do good. And it makes me wonder, are these coffee shops doing more for the community? Are they doing more for the earth? Are they, are they doing more good than us, church? Hebrews urges us, to worship God, do good, and share what you have. Then, only then, the Spirit will have room to fill you to the rim. God give us courage and wisdom and compassion. I invite you to follow Jesus. If you want to be a Christian, leave me a comment. And if you're already a disciple of Christ, I urge you to deepen your discipleship. Read your Bible. Our Psalm this week is Psalm 112. That's 112. Put your faith into action. In addition to reading the Bible, Today, um, I invite you to tell someone, maybe me, about your special mug that you brought to worship, a mug that reminds you of being a Christian. And share with Bright Divinity School, my seminary, our seminary. Don't forget, share with your local congregation or First Christian Church. Our mailing address and Venmo information are located on our Facebook page. And I promise that we do everything within our power to be good stewards of each and every gift entrusted to our care. As we make our offerings, let us receive some beautiful music by Julie Durgis, Dr. Julie Durgis. <laughs>
please hold your cell phone if you give through Venmo or the check you've written. I invite you to join me in praying silently for the building up of God's kingdom and for the sharing of the good news that our gifts make possible. Let us pray. Amen. This meal is for you, for all of you. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for grain and grape, bread and wine, eating and drinking as a community. We know that when we meet as a community, you are with us. And when we eat as a community, we are at your table. Bless this meal, bless this ministry, and bless our lives, your servants. Amen. We remember the night Jesus sat at table with his disciples. He took the bread of their meal, and he blessed it, giving thanks to God. Then he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, Take, eat do this in remembrance of me. In a similar manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup of their meal. After giving thanks to God, he gave the cup to the disciples and he said to them, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the way Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When I was a kid, we always sang the, la the same last song at the end of every worship service every week. And so we're going to sing one verse of that, and we're going to do it a cappella because I can't reach the notes right now. But there you go. It's called Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. So now as we leave this special time together, church, let us go in peace and live God's love so that our worship will continue everywhere. And that, church, is good to the last drop. Amen. <laughs>